So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start again with Dr. Hoven. You get to ask the question. Jamie gets three minutes to answer the question. You get two minutes to rebut his answer. Does that okay. make sense? Uh, Jamin, I would like two parts to this question. Do you believe the Bible teaches there was death before sin? And do you believe your frame of reference, your worldview, your old earth theory teaches there was death before sin? So was there death before sin? Or why is there death in the world? Might be another way to phrase the question. Mm -hmm. According to your worldview and according to Scripture, how, do you think they're both the same? Go ahead. Well, thanks. Um, I found this question to be very thought-provoking and... and uh, as I was, and of course, it's one of the big questions that Christians are asked all the time. So we need to, to have a good answer on this one. Um, and also, there's many layers. So um, I, I would not equate death with evil, first of all. There are two different questions. Why is there death or why is there evil? And, and the reason I say that is because uh, we know that Christ was ordained to die before the foundation of the world. God set that up. And that was a profoundly good thing. So I would not say that death inherently is bad. In that case, it was a very good thing. There are other examples. However, death and suffering um, did come into the world by sin. And I, I, but I would specify that human death, uh, there's two different kinds. There's spiritual death, which was a natural consequence of the fall. And then there was physical death, which was the judgment when God took away the, f the tree of life, right? So spiritual death, in Romans 5, it says spiritual, that death came through sin and spiritual life came through Christ. So it's spiritual death we're talking about. Animals, on the other hand, um, I don't think this applies to. Um, I don't think God made any mistakes in his design. I think that he, or he created carnivores to eat, eat meat and he created herbivores to eat um, plants. So I think that's part of his very good creation, and I think that creatures that don't have a spirit uh, are not created in the image of God. It's not inherently evil for them to die. I think that's part of God's natural order that he created, um, as opposed to human death. He didn't mean for humans to physically die. That's why he gave them the tree of life. So. Well, okay. Yeah, I get two minutes. Let me just take one and let him take the other one for an answer. Do you believe then when God said in Genesis 1.31, at the end of chapter 1, God looked at everything and said it was very good. When he said that, at that time, Adam was created, and at that time was Adam standing on top of thousands of feet of, of dead things, fossils, and was Adam seeing the animals, you know, tear the guts out of each other uh, in, around him, like the lion tearing up the zebra, and God looked at that and said it was very good. You're telling me God said that was very good. Again, yes, I think that his creation was exactly the way he intended it to be. I don't think there was any mistakes in it. I think that the design of uh, carnivores was exactly exactly what it should have been. Uh, lions would have a hard time digesting grass, and uh, you know, sharks would have a hard time eating seaweed. Their bodies aren't made for it. So I do think that that was the way God intended it, and because they were not created in God's image, I don't see that it's inherently evil that they should have uh, died. I, as to the garden, I don't know how the garden was set up other than it was paradise. So I do believe that the, Bible, that the garden, right now, is the way I believe is the garden uh, did not have death in it. God uh, segregated it. Well, if I can continue. Did, yep. When God, the Bible says God's going to restore it like it used to be someday, are we going to always see the death and suffering of animals then? Is that going to be the restored to the, be the very good again? It'll just be human death? My point is, I think you have an inconsistency in your theology that okay. I think you need to look at. Okay, can, so you think, okay, so the question I'm, is, when well, things are restored, yep. I'm, I'm going to ask that, uh, you've had your three minutes, I'm going to ask that, sure. that you address his answer for two minutes. He, he's got to give a question now, right? What's that? Then, then he'll get to ask you a question, or you can ask another question. Uh, another question? Uh, no, I'd, I'd like to have you address his answer. For two oh, yeah, I think his answer theologically is, is totally wrong. I think that uh, the Bible teaches clearly there was no death, a man or animal. I think uh, you'd have a hard time proving from Scripture that plants uh, die. If you can get my screen on there, brother. I've got quite a few. Uh, I think I can demonstrate pretty clearly from Scripture. Uh, that's got the wrong one. Okay. Um, let's see. I got to the wrong one. Was there death before sin? Never mind. You shut it down. I don't have the right slide up. 
Um, I go through seminar part six that uh, I think plants wither, they fade, but it's, it's pretty clear that uh, there's a distinction between plants and, and animals and humans. The Bible clearly talks about humans and animals being alive. It never talks about plants being alive. Uh, they fade, they wither, uh, but they, they don't die. My computer can die, but it's not alive. Um, a car can die, but it's not alive. So I think that uh, there's quite a, an inconsistency in theology to say that there was, a, uh, there was death in the world and it wasn't brought here by man. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, the whole creation groaneth and travaileth. It's pretty clear all through Scripture that the whole creation suffers because of man's sin. All the animals drowned because of man's sin. Uh, there's always been suffering in the world because of man's sin. As far as the teeth, uh, the, there's a lion that just died oh, 40 years ago, but it was used in movies for years. Uh, the lion never ate meat in its life. His name was Little Tyke. I've got a picture of it here, uh, if I can get to it in time. But uh, Little Tyke died in a movie, in a movie set accident. Actually, went, lived 11 years without ever uh, eating meat. They actually refused. There, uh, one lady said they have a kennel full of dogs that they raise that they never eat meat. They're vegetarian dogs. So it's not correct to say that the teeth proves an animal was uh, necessarily... Um, I think I got the picture of Little Tyke right here someplace. There we go. The lion that wouldn't eat meat named Little Tyke. Creation Magazine, March 2000, has a big six-page article about it. Um, so it's inconsistent to say that uh, the animals, have, because of their sharp teeth, have to eat meat. Panda bears have sharp teeth. Uh, fruit bats have really sharp teeth. They never eat meat in their life, okay? So I think that's, that's incorrect. All right, we have uh, time for one question from Jamin to Dr. Hoven, and then the answer and rebuttal, and then we'll be taking a break. Sure. <clears throat> Dr. Hoven, um, on your website, you respond to the Answers in Genesis uh, group that, that put out the uh, arguments that creationists should not use. Um, and one of them, there, there's several that, in which your response was similar to this. So the issue is not the, the actual argument that they're refuting. But um, what they, so the argument is there was no rain before the flood. This is not a direct teaching of Scripture, so there should be no dogmatism. And your response was, there is no way to know the truth of this one. And then you go on to explain that but this, because the Scripture is silent on this issue. So my question is, on matters that the scriptures are silent on, is there no way to know about them? Okay, no, there, there may be ways to know. I love science, that's what scientific, uh, scientific uh, explorations are for in scientific observations. But uh, this, as far as was there rain before the flood, I think my point was the Bible mentions during the creation week, a mist went forth and watered the garden. It's never mentioned again until all of a sudden it rains in the days of Noah. The assumption is that it never rained until the flood, but I think it'd be impossible to prove that from Scripture is my point. So I think that we could look at scientific evidence uh, and discover many things that the Bible is silent about. The Bible never mentions computers, never mentions cars, doesn't mention a lot of things. That doesn't mean, you know, they don't exist. Um, so, but I think there are things the Bible is so clear on, like the age of the earth. In six days, the Lord made heaven and earth. Uh, Adam brought death into the world. I think the Bible is so clear on these topics that it's not a matter of the Bible silent and we have to guess what we believe. The Bible is clear and we have to decide what we believe. That's my point. And then my response would be, um, can you show me, or is there a place where it actually says that um, the creation days are 24-hour periods? Um, and, and also, you know, does it refer... So I don't see gravity in there. I don't see um, DNA. There's, you know, as you mentioned, computers. Uh, you know... Where do you see the Okay, Exodus the chapter 20 in the Ten Commandments. God wrote it on a rock with his finger. He doesn't stutter. He said, In six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is. And he rested the seventh day. And he's telling Moses, I want you to honor the seventh <clears throat> day because I did it in six days. Later in Exodus chapter 31, verse 7.